Good morning. Good morning. I gotta put that in front of your face. <laughs> morning. It's a very gray Monday. It's been a gray last three days. It's been really rainy. Really, even if part of Friday too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How was your workout? Workout was good. Yeah. Today was back and I did abs, some lower back too. So that How was come good. you got done so fast? Back is a quick workout. I don't know why. Well, I do superset and that kind of takes a lot of the time and shortens it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I always get done quick on back. Yeah, you, I mean, you showed up by bike at quarter after. We're I like, know. are you done? That's I'm crazy. Like, no, I'm not done. That's crazy. So, wow, why is it? I green? guess it decided to give us green today instead. Wow, that's it's being strange. Yeah. So, um, I did cardio today. Rode about ten miles, so that was good. Got to talk to the guy that um, runs the facility. We're going to try and do uh, an R and R journey. Um, presentation about whole food plant-based eating so we're gonna which could be really fun yeah it should be fun he was like how do we make that happen i'm like we pick a day and time and make it happen right so um i want to do uh give you some final thoughts on the rice diet book i um finished reading it over the weekend i told you guys when i started reading it it's not a whole food plant-based book but it does have a lot of information in it about the mental psychological and emotional aspects of trying to lose weight so it's interesting in that way. The one thing I don't like about it is they are very big on restricting food intake. Right. So, you know, how much are you eating? How many calories are you eating? How many, how much are you exercising? And it's exhausting to do it, that. And it never works long term. And that's the thing. They yeah. even talk about people in here who, you know, lost a hundred pounds, but then ended up gaining it all back right. plus some. And right. I mean, yo-yo dying a hundred pounds is that's serious. a lot. That's serious so, stuff. Um, yeah, so that was disappointing for me. Um, as far as though they do talk about getting a support group and being part of a support group right. and being keep surrounding uh, yourself with people or pixelating, surrounding yourself with people who are um, let's see if doing itself. the same thing. Yeah, it's not so bad. No, it it's looks a little like it's bit trying bad. To get better. <laughs> um, so that's the, I guess that's one good thing is it does talk about the emotional aspects and, and the benefits of journaling and how you feel about. Right. about the journey you're on because it can help you kind of work through it. Uh -huh. So that was good. As a psychologist, I found that interesting. I'm not sure if it's a beneficial book for just the average person to read. Is it, it, is it, did you say it was very um, scientific? Or is it, it's not. It's not? It's not. It, and it has a bunch of recipes in the back, and there wasn't a single one of them that's like, oh, you know, maybe I'll make that. Yeah. There was one that I was like, yeah, maybe, but I doubt I'll, I'd ever make it. So that was disappointing to me. Um, if I was going to recommend a book to read to, to help you with your health and wellness, this would not be it. Right. And then the whole book is, is based on the rice that is based on an experiment done in the 1930s, right? Right. It was discovered in the 1930s. And, right. and they have a there's, a, there's a rice house, that they, I think is what they call it, where it's a, a facility where people go and actually in in-house monitored and yeah and I don't know, where they it's feed controlled. you and they make you exercise and they make you do yoga and they right. make you journal so um and it works i mean when you're when you're there it works i'm right. not sure if it yeah. i think it's harder to, in that case to and i'm not sure it's it. any better than any other yo-yo you know quick fix you know because yeah. like like it said in the book is people want them getting the weight back if they don't stay there right there in yeah. a very strict and i think that's because it's very strict about yeah. calorie and portion control whereas if you're eating whole food plant-based no calorie there is no, and I was actually yeah. talking to somebody at the gym today who said that's the thing she loves the most about kind of what we we've, we've taught her is that she can eat a lot of food yeah. because it's the it's high volume low calorie density. Right. Right. So but we wanted to talk to you about that kind of today. Um, I have my phone because I took some pictures. We were at a um, a big box store this weekend, yes. the one that we go to, which we won't name today because I'm going to actually kind of. Call it out a little Call bit. Call them out a little bit. Right. Um, I've told you guys before that my breakfast, the oatmeal that I eat for breakfast, I've, I've counted it, and it's between 700 and 800 calories. And you've had people comment like, oh, my God, that's so many calories. Right. People are yeah. shocked <clears throat> that I eat that many calories just for breakfast. Right. And But that's, I mean, that's what I do. That's the cal calories. And I don't even think about it. I just throw it all in there, and I right. eat it. And it's super filling, and I, it keeps me satisfied for right. the five or six hours until we have um, lunch. lunch at yeah. probably two or three in the afternoon. Right. And if I'm busy, I'll forget. Russ I have to, to keep reminding. He has on. to be like, "Hey, my come tummy down. says it's time to eat." Because you know, oatmeal. The oatmeal I eat keeps me full. Right. And so we were at this um, the store, and they have in the front they have a place where they have food. Right. And so be ready to be shocked is what I would say. 
so I, I took pictures because I wanted to make sure that I remembered the numbers correctly because it was so surprising. So they have, um, for example, they have pizza that's available there. And if I make it bigger here, their um, combo pizza, which I don't know what's on it, but 760 calories a slice. A slice. A slice. Yes. Um, their cheese pizza, 760 calories a slice. What right. was really strange for me is the pepperoni – What's, 710. How is pepperoni less than cheese? I can only assume they put less cheese on it if they're going to put pepperoni. Yeah. You know? And so, and the, the slices are two bucks a piece. So, so I can't imagine anyone eats less than two slices right. of so pizza. So two slices of pizza, you're at 1,500 calories. Which for most people is their basal metabolic rate for the day. Right. Um, and not to mention the amount of fat and cholesterol right. and the hard to process food that's in it. Right. It's not even food. So. Um, they have these little, um, they're like dessert. Cinnamon twist, twist cinnamon things. Twist things yes. And they're, they're, I mean, they're big. They're like a foot long, I guess. 530 calories. So much for a snack. So <laughs> I guess the point that I'm, I'm trying to make is that the food that you eat, especially if you're out, if it doesn't have the calories listed, yes. you would be shocked at the amount of calories. Right. So when, when people are shocked that I'm eating oatmeal with fruit and nuts and seeds in it, right. that's in this range. The reality is it's so much more filling, it's so much healthier, it's so much easier for my body to process right. than this kind of thing that, that, they're, that they're eating. I mean, even their chicken Caesar salad, which I'm guessing is what people would order if they wanted to be healthy, is 650 600. calories, and it's not going to keep you satisfied for very long because there's no starch in it. No starch, right. So probably an hour after you're like, I'm hungry again. And we've talked about how yeah. it's the starches, you know, the, the grains and, and the potatoes. Right and the beans that keep you full and keep you satisfied. Right. Good morning, David. Morning, David. Um, so I, I, I know we've told you that a calorie is a silly measurement because it's the amount of energy required to raise a gram of water one degree Celsius, mm -hmm. raise the temperature one degree Celsius. So that is silly. And I've said before, your body can't count calories and neither should you. Right. But when you look at this and you start to really think about how many calories are in this food and how many calories do I burn? So for example, I rode the bike today about an hour, roughly 10 miles. And according to the bike, which that measurement, you know, could be really, really off in that time, I only burned 350 calories right. in an hour, in an hour of a pretty vigorous, pretty vigorous activity. up and down hills, yeah. bike riding. Right. So, I think that people make the mistake that they think they burn more calories than they do doing right. activities. And I think that people make a mistake about how many, how many calories are in food right. that they're eating, especially if that food has, is a meat product and has oil in it. Right. So one of the points I would make is that um, if you're going to, if you, if you like pizza, so every once in a while you go out and have pizza, I'm not telling you not to do that. I think, I mean, it depends on where you are in, in this type in of your eating, journey. In your journey, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, but the thing to keep in mind is you can take in so much volume of food on a whole food plant-based diet. Satisfy yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I eat to the point where I can't eat anymore, and I wake up light the next day. And I'm like, really? You know? <laughs> so, um, you know, and I'm working out. I, I mean, my muscles don't look any smaller. I'm not, you know, I'm not protein-deprived. Right, you're uh, not deficient. I'm not deficient, and um, so everything is good. My energy levels is le level is great, um, and I will have a glass of wine once in a while, right? I mean, definitely. Which I have to always remind him to put, put it in on my his diary. Food journal. Yes, because he, he leaves it out. He like, yeah. randomly forgets. So yes, on our membership section of our website, we have basically everything we eat in a day. We chart every day. We, we we tell you what that is, and also our workouts every day. And days we don't work out, we started posting the days we aren't working out as well. Oh, Jennifer wants us to repeat what we eat for breakfast. Sure. sure. Um, I, we're not today because today's a fasting day, yes. but sure, I'll give you a quick rundown. We both eat oatmeal for breakfast pretty much every single day. I, I have exceptions. Russ has eaten oatmeal every day for 40 years. Yes. He eats rolled oats. I eat steel cut oats. I don't like, I feel like rolled oats are mushy, so I don't like them. I like the steel cut oats. We uh, Half cup each. Half a cup. And then we put, and this is uh, this is on our journal, obviously, if you're a member of our website, um, spirulina, which is pond scum, which right. is supposed to be really good. Somebody gave me an article about that today. I'll read it and I'll share it with you if it's relevant. Um, so spirulina, amla, flaxseed, pumpkin seed, hemp seed, hemp seed, 
sunflower, sunflower seeds, uh, blueberries, blueberries, usually. Blueberries, bananas, sometimes right. raisins. Right. Yeah. So all of that in one bowl. All, and it's, I mean, we, I'll show you our bowls. We have big bowls. And it winds up looking green because the spirulina is the most dominant coloring. So we have, these are, we use a big soup bowl. As you can tell, this is a pretty big, a big bowl. And it is full of right. food when we get, when we get done making and it. I, and I'm full after I eat it. I oh mean, yeah. It's not like I have room to go ahead and eat something else. No, I'm definitely yeah. full. But by the time I get done eating, I'm like, boy, I'm glad I'm I'd done I'd say that the major difference between you and I is then about an hour and a half, two hours later, I'm getting some fruit. And I'm eating some more. Right. Now yeah. I don't. I don't yeah. typically snack during the day. I have snack on our on our journals. I have it written in case that I do, right. but I typically don't. Um, right. So what we list basically is our breakfast, our lunch, our dinner, and then we have a snack. So everything that we've eaten that that's out of the realm of those three meals. Right. And that's on that's part of the membership. If you're a member of our and our journey, right. that's one of the things you get. That and our workouts. Our workouts and the, are on and there. the um, community page where you can actually communicate. Mostly it'll be with. Uh, Doc Robin. <laughs> well, yeah, with uh, me and with other members. And other you members. Can have conversations. And there's topics and there's, you can interact with people and, and even with recipes. If you want to interact with recipes and share that, that's all on the community page. Yep. So, yeah. And so the point being is that you can either choose to eat high volume, great nutrition, amazing food, like what we eat for breakfast at 750 to 800 calories, right. or you can choose to eat a slice of pizza, which is low volume, High calorie, calorie, high fat, high animal protein, high animal protein, which is hard yeah. for your kidneys and liver to process, yeah. and then has all the cholesterol and other drama and, in it. And I, I don't know if we've talked about this. We probably had the day we talked about protein, but I'll just mention it because I think it's interesting. Is that you know there's always this theory that animal protein, and and we were we were listening to the, the China study. the China study, and they talk about and it's very scientific. So if you're not into that, you probably wouldn't like it's it. It's a little deep right it's now. Probably a little bit deep for a lot of people. Um, Deep for me. Fortunately, I have somebody who translates it. <laughs> uh, but it talks about how the perfect protein that a human could eat would be another human. So human meat would be the perfect protein for humans. And that's and that he's talking about the misnomer that humans believe you have to have complete proteins right. that are easy to process, right. Right. and that you know animal protein is the ideal protein. Right. And it's it's a complete misnomer. It was actually made up by a guy who was studying. Um, protein back in the early 1900s. Who, who, figured out, who also figured out that the human body needs about 45 grams of protein a day, and that's like an average, but then he recommended 125. Just because maybe you need more. Right. So and say, better safe than right, sorry. Right. We're pixelating again. Oh, okay. Oh, well. We'll just have to deal with it. We're yes. almost done. We're almost done. But again, and so, and then he talks about every variation beyond that for animals is, is, a, is a, deg a degradation of the protein that you need. It's not, this, it's not the quality. And it's actually better for us. And I'm not saying go out and eat humans. That is <laughs> not what I'm saying. <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, it's right. far bad for your liver too. Right. But the point being is you can get everything you need from plants. It's mm -hmm. a little more difficult for your body to process, which, which actually a, turns out to be a good thing. I was just going to say, that's a good thing. It's actually healthier for you to have to work a little harder to process your food. Right. Um, and and it, 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 it's better because it has fiber in it, which animal protein has zero fiber. Right. The uh, amount of fiber that most Americans take in is so, so bad, which is why we end up with colon cancer. Well, I mean, that's why when you look at somebody's uh, restaurant advertising on TV, they show the meat and they show the, the dairy stuff. Right. You know, or the fried stuff. No, you know, and you're not getting the volume, you're getting the density. Yep. And I think I'm, I'm going to work on putting something together that has, um, ha, you know, here's a meal plan that will be part of the membership too. Okay. I guess it's not going to fix itself today with no. the, uh, the pixelation. It was yeah. better, now it's not. Right. So we probably had more to talk about, but I think. No, I think we covered what we wanted to cover. Okay. I wanted to just say that. The number of calories in food that you get out is scary. Yes. And it equals what I eat yes. for breakfast that people freak out right. about. So this goes to what we say when we, when we end our show, and we will say it shortly. But the point being is that just eat mostly plants. If you can't go into a, a total whole food plant-based diet, start by just thinking about eating mostly plants. If, you are, if you're going to have a piece of um, animal product, you know, occasionally that's okay. Um, you know, 100% is, is great, but you know, yes, anything, anything that you can move towards that direction, it would be fantastic. So Jennifer's asking about protein shakes. I'll talk about that real quickly. Um, it depends upon the type of protein. Obviously. Oh, it got better. Oh, it got better all of a sudden. Um, it depends upon the type of protein you're taking in. Um, the plant-based proteins are going to be a better option, easier for your body to process. 
but the reality is we don't need nearly as much protein as we think we do. Right. And anything you take in over and above what your body can actually use, your body has to process and get rid of. And that means either turn it into fat because right. excess protein is stored as fat or try to wash it through, which is what puts incredible stress on your liver and your kidneys. Right. If you talk to people who are on the paleo diet for any length of time, um, I've seen a lot of studies that show they get a backache. And the reason they get a backache is because their kidneys start to ache. And you know, your kidneys can only do so much. And if you're, if you're running protein through them, it's really hard on them. So we actually stopped taking in any, right. pro and the other thing about protein powder is it's chemically processed. You yeah, so can't create not, it without right, chemically right. processed. So, so right away, it. it's missing some of the natural stuff that would be in, say like you're taking whey and milk, right? Yeah. Even though milk's very carcinogenic, um, I don't know if we can say that. You can. Okay. Um, but still, by taking it and extracting the whey from it, you're actually not getting the whole protein. You're not getting all the nutrients that are required to be around the protein. I, and I wouldn't recommend whey protein ever. No. But, but, but for me, so I went from when I used to bodybuild, to show you my transition, I used to take 100% egg, you know, egg white protein powder. Right? It was 100% egg white. And I did that for years. And then I got off the protein powders for a while. Then I started looking, getting back into it, trying to figure out which one. And at the time, whey was the thing that everybody told you to take, was whey protein. Mm -hmm. So then for the longest time, I was, I was taking whey protein. I mean, for years. Every day with his oatmeal. With my oatmeal. That's, that's when I would put it in my oatmeal. Um, and then when we got into the whole food plant-based diet, and I learned that the carcinogenics that are in the dairy, um, that I decided, okay, I'll go to a whole, I'll go to a whole food plant-based, a vegetarian. You, you pick pea protein, I think. I think it's a variety, but yeah. I think the it was, majority was pea, but it was a variety of different plants. And then we started learning that all well and good, however, you can't, you can't replicate how it occurs naturally. The whole package. In a plant. So every time you extract an element, whether it be vitamins, minerals, whatever it is, you're not getting the way, you're not getting it into your system the way nature intended you to. So your body's got to find different ways, and usually it doesn't find different ways which is why they used an example of an apple and vitamin C, where they gave people 500 milligrams of vitamin C. I no, believe. it was way more than that. Was it, was it, was it was half a cup of, of Maybe apple. Maybe it was 1,500. Yeah, I think it was 1,500. 1,500 milligrams of vitamin C, and then they compared it to taking eating an apple. Which has about that amount. Um, no, it had a lot less. A lot less. A lot less. But the point was, when they then went back and checked their blood to see the, vi the vitamin C level, they found that the people taking the vitamin C had a lower, um, I don't know, Chemical, whatever it was, measurement of the of vitamin C in their system than a person who ate one apple or one cup of apple. So the apple is better for you. Right. What they discovered, um, like right, magnitudes and, better. And that's when I started discovering that it's the other elements that are in the the actual that we don't food understand. that we don't understand. And you can't duplicate because there's there's like you know, I don't know, I don't know what number they use. I don't want to exaggerate, but it was like a lot of numbers of different pro, different elements in there that you need in order to utilize the vitamin C. So I guess that's a really long answer to say sorry, we don't do. use yes. <laughs> we don't use um, protein powders. I know they're easy food, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of reasons why we feel like they're not right for us. Mm -hmm. And when we when we talk to people, you know, clients, and when we do speaking engagements, we actually had someone come up to me and say, "Great, now I have to throw away all my protein powder." Right. Do what we did. We didn't throw anything out. We used everything till it was gone. We just transitioned. We it transitioned. took us nine months to right. go from okay, we're going to do this to being where we are now, which is right. about ninety-eight percent. Right. Yeah. The only thing, actually, the only thing I eat that's not plant-based is about a tablespoon of butter every once in a while when I have popcorn. And you guys know I still have a uh, salad dressing right. drama. Right. <laughs> so yeah. that, that's our thoughts on it. Um, but the, what I, the point I really wanted to make today is that. You can get so much food and so it's so yummy if you eat plants and you know how to do it well. And that's, we found the, you know, the page that people are going to the most on our website is the recipes page. Right. So, and there's going to be way more recipes on the membership Such part a, of it eventually right. than, than not. Right. But, right. And I'd love to have people interacting on the community page with that. Right. Because sharing recipes, trying recipes, finding out what your results are. And then as a community, figuring out how we can fine tune these recipes. So, so it's like, just right. Good you guys burger. probably saw I posted over the weekend. I failed at making baba ganoush. Yes. I tried. I burned the eggplant. Right. It was bad. And my my uh, shepherd's pie got trapped in the pot because the lid got stuck right. on. I couldn't right. get the lid off. I had to pry it. It was, right. it was hysterical. And, and when I made bread this week, I added rye. So I usually use a cup of um, 
you know, unbleached flour, two cups of unbleached flour, or it's supposed to be organic. I believe it is organic. Organic bleached flour, unbleached flour, and I used to use two cups of whole wheat um, flour. So I decided to take only one cup of the white, and I added rye, and then I added the wheat, and it, the bread didn't rise as much. Bread still came out really good. It's still good, really good. It's just but not it didn't rise as much. So, so there's your differences that you have to kind of expect when you're getting away from the processed foods. Right. Yeah. But it was good. It, it was it's good. really yummy. And it's oh, good yeah. With, it's good with my about that much hummus, which is a recipe I'm going to put on the right, website. Right. And I made it because we had somebody coming over to, to have a whole food uh, plant-based lunch with They us. wanted to have lunch. So. And so I made it for that occasion. Yeah. Yeah, so I think we're done. I think we're done. All right, I'll stop. I'll put my tea down <laughs> so we can end it by saying. Wait, wait, wait. We have to tell them, if you like, if you give value, please right. do like and share and tell other people about it because yeah. our goal is to be able to help yeah. as many people as possible. And like our R&R our &R Journey page. Come to the yeah, the R&R &R Journey page on Facebook right. and visit our website, rnrjourney.com. Exactly. Okay, now you Now can I can do it? Okay. And so with that, we'll just say eat real food, not too much. Mostly, Mostly plants. plants. Have a great day, guys. We'll see you tomorrow.